Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, I'm going to answer one of our God ordained spouse question um, around, you know, her God ordained prodigal spouse borrowing money from her. Okay, so let's jump into her question. Hi, Tequila. I really appreciate your consistency on the channel. It often meets me at a point of need on a daily basis. The short version of my question is, can I proceed to legal proceedings against my God-ordained spouse? We have been separated for 20 months. During this period, he has borrowed a lot of money from me. My mistake, I guess. He mostly borrowed the money when he was destitute last year. Despite having started a relationship with another woman, this year he has experienced great financial blessing and even offered me a job at some point only to ghost me and lay me off. The money is for my school fees due this year. He had just bought another car while he is aware that my school fees debt is due for, for me to graduate. We have discussed the fees issue amicably and he says he will pay back, but doesn't, but doesn't. It has been over a year not being paid back. Today, I received reports that he has posted his new car purchase on social media. If I take legal action, I feel it will really affect us as a family unit one day if God's will is to be rejoined. <coughs> Excuse me. I also don't want to be vengeful, but feel he has taken advantage of me not being forceful on the matter. I have always believed that God will put a stop to his hurtful and prideful behavior. But I, I now, but I know I feel pressed to sue him for the outstanding money, and I don't really want to be a part of his lesson on humility. Please advise. The full story is below. I received a word directly from God in September of 2017 that the same man was my God ordained husband. I was 26 years old at the time, and he a year older. We were both in grad school, and I received income while he didn't. We were in relationship from 2018 to 2021, during which I received multiple confirmation on our marriage, never mentioned the God or day spouse thing to him. He in turn would assist that I was his wife and would treat me as such. In 2021, he got a better job, moved me into his new rental, then kicked me out. He immediately started dating an old friend of his and moved her in. In the interim, his family has publicly ridiculed me and shamed me, blaming me for all that has gone wrong between me and him. I used to help him support them financially as well. His new pastor, prophet, a good friend to his mother, said I had a bad spirit on me and told him to break up with me while we were still together. As recently as last month, he continued to prophesy that I would bring doom to my prodigal spouse if he continues to see me. The prophet also says that the other woman will be a great help, uh, helper on his destiny if he stays with her. The other woman has also joined his church and served there. My God, her name spouse secretly started attending that church towards that time, towards the time he kicked me out of his home. I have prayed heavily about the matter, and just as I concluded that I was done with standing in obedience, <coughs> excuse me, I bumped into your channel. We were never legally married, so I don't know if God even sees or respects our covenant. I was not a believer at the time of our relationship, but now I am saved. Please advise. All right, so thank you for sending in your question. <clears throat> Let me just start by saying, um, you know, giving legal advice is out of my expertise, okay? So I don't give out any legal advice. I will say this. This is the advice I will give you, Okay. Um, and I talked about this in previous lives, you know, one of the reasons why we have prodigals, specifically a lot of male prodigals, um, you know, running around here in this world is because of a lack of accountability. OK. And so as we take a look at your situation and what you are dealing with, you know, uh, with your prodigal uh, spouse, you know, this man has borrowed money from you. Um only for him to keep giving you the runaround. You know, he gave you a job only to lay you off and ghost you, right? You know, and as you stated in the email, he, he know that your school fees are due, but he don't care. You know, it's, it's, it's over a year, you know? 
it's been over a year um, since, you know, he paid back the money. And so now you are faced with the question, you know, if I take legal action against him and if God bring us together, you feel like it's going to affect your family union. Here's the thing. You got to learn how to separate business from family, right? This was business when you um, allowed him to borrow this money. This don't have anything to do with your God ordained family coming together. Okay. And then also, because I noticed you said, if you said, if God, if it's God's will, you know, to rejoin us. So <clears throat> if you're not 100% solid and so on, if this is God's will for you, then yes, you know, for that would tell me to go ahead and proceed with legal proceedings because I'm not 100% certain that God said that this is what he's going to do. Right. And if, and if you did hear God say that this is your God ordained spouse, then again, you know, you got to get 100% solid on what God said, but also know, know how to separate business from family union. Okay. And then you also got to take it to another level in understanding and knowing that even, even if I sue my God ordained spouse and when God bring this back together, I have faith and trust in the God that I serve to where I know God is going to deal with that man's heart. God is going to bring correction in this particular area. God is going, because God know that this is my concern, that if I sue my God ordained spouse, that this might affect our God ordained marriage. And so when I take my concern to the Lord and put it at his feet, I, I have faith in knowing that God is going to deal with this situation. He's going to bring correction where correction is needed. Therefore, I don't have to sit in this concern and worry. You, you see what I'm saying? Or even continue to go in debt, right? Or even have to suffer from, you know, um, this, you know, this mistake right here. Okay. So, you know, we got to, we got to move into a level of accountability. Okay. And you got to put yourself first here. You have to put yourself first here. You got to believe the action that this man is showing you and hold him accountable. If you can't hold him accountable on this level, when you get married, how are you going to hold him accountable as his help me? See, I say this all the time. While we are in the divine separation, while you are standing for your God ordained marriage, God is building in us what we need before we get in the marriage. He is teaching us accountability. He's teaching us boundaries. He's teaching us how to, you know, respect, love, and value ourselves. We got to learn this stuff now before we get in the marriage. So if you are having a, you know, hard time holding him accountable now, come on now. As a help me, one of our roles as a help me is to hold our spouses accountable. Holding him accountable helps him to become a better husband for you. Yes, he might have a fit when you hold him accountable. Yes, he may not even like it. He might stop talking to you. So what? He need accountability, okay? This man need accountability. And accountability is the very thing that's going to help him grow up and grow into a mature man, okay? So that's my advice. And my recommendation, I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.